um, this is just a board, illustration board, and I decided after my experiments that I showed you earlier that um, given that you can lift paint and you can, you know, lift with an eraser and things like that over the, the polymer medium, this is a rough grid. I'm not sure if you can see that, but if I tilt it, you can kind of see that in a rough grid shape, I have put um, either white gesso or I put polymer medium. So it's anybody's guess what's gonna happen. I totally do not know, but I do know that it's gonna be a bit of a grid um, pattern because it's a pretty big area. And just, again, keep going, <laughs> I have no idea what's gonna happen, um, but that's the fun of it for me. So you can now you can see where the um, polymer medium is. Kind of figured that would happen. So with this type of tool, you know, I, I have a choice. I can either go all the way to the edge, but I kind of like this um, irregular edge. And maybe I'll just do some interesting shape like this and break it into a shape. So um, the whole idea when you when you have your format, which in this case happens to be a square, um, from the minute that you start to do anything, you're starting to break up space, even if it's just with marks. You can kind of see what happens there as I draw that through. And again, this is illustration board. And the cool thing, again, one of the reasons I did that experiment was because I'm really curious about um, using the polymer medium kind of as a resist. So wherever it goes um, over both, like let's say this corner down here, and I'm sure a lot of this is kind of hard to see, but so it is going to pick up a little bit of that red, but it, it carried the red over to the, the turquoise area and I kind of like that, but it acts as a glaze, but it's also bringing some warmth to the red. And then once I do that, maybe it was too runny. So here I'm using a thicker, maybe so it's not quite so runny. Because the more runny it is, the more watery it is, and the more watery it is, the more it might disturb these colors. So again, I'm, I'm trying to see if this color, this quinacridone, nickel azo quinacridone gold, when I put it over the red, it put this warmth over the red. If I put it over here and just kind of glaze over it, you know, what does it do? Does it make this part of the painting feel more unified with say that corner down there and right away my eye wants to go from here to there because right now those are the two things that are unified. I don't have this color here and I don't have it here. So my eyes kind of like, <laughs> if I left this painting just this way, this is what would happen. And you have full control over what happens, you know, when you're painting. The point of play is to get started, uh, have no expectations of any kind, you know, really feel that freedom and that, that same thing you felt when you were three and you probably haven't felt it since you were three. So if you can really get yourself back to that stage, you know, you don't want to stay three forever. You get to a point where you're like, okay, um, I had my fun, but now I'm, I'm, I'm serious and I want this painting to go somewhere. So the whole idea then is to transition. And I think of it as, um, okay, this is like, definitely a play stage painting, but, but starting to do things like this, they're a little bit, a little bit more thought because, you know, I, I have to get out my, um, my straight edge. I have to actually make this rectilinear shape. Part of that is, well, being able to ask yourself what you don't have is a little bit more grown up than anything goes, right? Um, play stage is anything goes, nothing matters. I don't care. But when you start to say, what don't I have? Well, that's a decision. Um, but what I'm going to do here, like, I like that color. I love this color. It's one of my favorite colors. And then I need to, um, this little experiment that I did earlier, um, like the whole point of this, like, you know, when you do these experiments, they, they don't really mean much, but they're very isolated things you're doing. But what I was doing was sort of like this and so now I can put this piece of um, wax paper over these dots and just let it sit like that. And you know, 
rare. And this is what I did with those block blobs. You know, I just wanted to get some really weird organic shapes. And this, there is no other way to get these shapes. I mean, this is how you get them. I can't paint that. Um, that's just a really weird shape. And, and I like it. <laughs> and it's a mess, which I like. I mean, again, I think play for me is like, I just, I don't really care. I, I just want it to be fun. And, um, and, and if I keep doing this, what'll happen is, um, because this is so much a layering process, eventually something will speak to me like, oh, well, if I turn my board this way, or if I, it, you know, I, I'm, I'm creating chaos and a final painting uh, for me, I don't really want it to be chaotic. I want it to be very readable. And I let the painting tell me, I, I really feel like the painting can, is, is, has all the answers I need. I just have to be open to not forcing my will upon it and playing it by ear. The more I try to plan, the less well it goes. So notice how um, there's a huge opportunity playing opacity off of transparency. And it just can't be overstated. I do like, I do know about myself, I like to work in the negative space. So what I mean by that is um, I'm, I'm coming around, it's almost like I'm sculpting and I'm saying, okay, I kind of like these areas. How can I make them stand up more? Well, notice what I'm doing here. I'm putting a very dull, desaturated purple. Somebody might call that mud, right? But that's why I say, well, mud can be a very important thing in your painting. You just need to know when you need it and how to make it. Well, most people don't need to lessons on how to make mud, but um, it, the thing is not to panic if you get it because it can actually be, it's a tool. It's a tool, just like your bright colors. It does have a purpose in your painting. Does anyone have any questions? Cause I'm just, I'm just goofing around now. And we're, we've got like 20 minutes left. So I, 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 this, at this point, if you have any questions, you can just unmute and ask and I'll, I'll keep goofing around. Pamela, uh, we, I think we would appreciate any additional uh, advice on how to move uh, from this stage where you are right now, structuring the painting mm -hmm. to the final product. Right, okay, right, that's a great question. Um, right, so that completely relies on a couple of things. Um, obviously your intuition. Um, so we have a, a combination of, of people on this um, in this class. And some of us are self-taught. And if you're self-taught and you have not really had any art training, then you're totally relying on your intuition and your intuition can get you really far. Um, and that's all I had for, you know, 20, probably 20 years. Um, and, and what that is, is like, you have a hunch that this is not balanced. Um, you have a hunch that um, this is the greatest painting I've ever done, or you feel like this is the worst painting I've ever done and I'm, never, I'm not even an artist and I can't call myself an artist. So, but we also have people who are in this workshop who've taken my design course and understand that, um, I guess if you understand design, which is not, it's not terribly complex, but if you don't understand design, then you're, you're kind of, always winging it. And sometimes you're gonna win and sometimes you're not gonna win. So when you're doing like your initial drawing um, and you're not sure what you're gonna leave or what you're gonna take away, um, would you lock in, lock in all of it? And just, be, just because you have that flexibility later? Yeah, that's not a bad idea. I mean, one thing you can do, cause you know, because everything is about layering and if right. you're the type of mark maker that, you know, you really want these marks to be retained in their original condition, um, I'd probably, and, and a lot of times when I showed you that thing with the deli paper and, you know, like if I wanted to lock this in, I would do that several times, like three or four times, let it dry in between and even do a test where you drop some water on it. And when you no longer see it bleeding, that tells you that you can now move on to the next layer. And if you do that, then you're building depth and 
everybody loves that feeling of like looking through layers and layers, you know? Yeah. So I would just say that, you, yeah, you have to be much more diligent about saving your marks. Yeah, it's good. It's not gonna run, you can see that. And, and that's just a little test. Now, if it did run, I would lock it in, you know, with some smooth deli paper with the polymer medium on the back side. but I think it's gonna be fine. So with that, those were the only real marks I had. I'm gonna just put this all over. That one's um, moving a bit more. So what I'll do is I often find that if I just kind of soak that up, I'll just let that soak it up like this. And now it's a lot lighter, but I can always emphasize that later. Some of these here, kind of dull them a little bit. a little bit darker. And then just take, you know, I don't mind some of the red showing through. I just want to manipulate the color a little bit. Makes it more interesting. Make it the texture that I want it. I don't want it all brush strokes. bit of this color here. So I'm bringing some warms into the cool side. Again, get it to be the texture you want it to be. So if you don't like the brush stroke showing, then you just have to manipulate it until it's... And to me, like if I use this Kleenex, I'm getting some sort of a similar feel to what was already there. Emphasis here and there. Put in very solid gray. It's the only real place in the painting right now where I have just solid gray. And it actually takes on a feeling of blue. And, and that's simultaneous contrast. And it's because it's starting to look blue because of all the warms that are right here. In fact, this gray looks a lot like that blue even though it isn't that blue. Um, so that's why color is tricky. It depends on what's next to it, what's around it, and that's fine. It's just important to know that your color is very much impacted by what's near it, what's nearby. But I do like bringing this, even though it's gray, it does relate to this blue. And I might put some of that same gray up here which is going to look a little blue. Take this out of the way. I left that little red dot there. I left that red up here. A little bit of saturation. And um, yeah, I'm pleased with that. So I'm going to just let that dry now and let it sit for a while. Uh, I do like to, I will sand the edges when it's all done drying. And yeah, I, I think pretty much I'm just gonna let it be this way now and um, I'm really liking it. Put a little bit of gray over that there. Okay, all right, well, thanks everyone. That was fun. Here it is up close, very shiny, but it will have its final coating of self-leveling medium and the cold wax and oil the cold wax medium.